All right, welcome again. This is Anna Galletly, and we are continuing on with Unit 1, and we're going to be focusing on this, the different types of stratified epithelium in this video lecture. All right, first let's look at stratified squamous epithelium. Now, your book is going to potentially distinguish between keratinized versus non-keratinized. I'm not really going to focus on that right now, um, other than I've borrowed the slides that show it. Um, so, stratified multiple rows of cells. The apical cells are going to eventually become flat, all right? And they're kind of scaly, okay? So the surface scales, which are flat, are squamous. The basal cells are going through mitosis in order to create more copies of themselves. So the basal cells are gonna be cuboidal or columnar in shape, okay? Now, Function, again, structure and function go together. This has lots and lots and lots and lots of rows of cells, all right? Because it has rows of cells, these cells up here can be sacrificed. So what you're going to do is use this type of tissue in an area where you have a lot of abrasion so that if you lose the surface cells, you don't start bleeding and die, okay? So what this does is it resists abrasion. Do not ever put this word on a quiz because it doesn't tell me how, all right? I want to know how this does what it does. It protects you by resisting abrasion so that when you lose a few layers of cells, you don't start bleeding and die, okay? Multiple layers of cells also helps prevent water loss because the thicker something is, the harder it is for water to get out. Okay, also if something is thick, if you get a scratch, if it only goes through a few layers of cells, then if there was a pathogen on whatever scratch, do you like a bacteria or a virus, it doesn't get in your body. So it creates a thicker barrier. So it's like, do you want a thin, so do you want your armor to be leather or metal or a thin piece of cotton? Which one's gonna protect you the best against a sword? Well the metal armor will protect you the best. Then the leather armor will protect you. The cotton isn't gonna do squat. So the thicker and harder it is, the more protection you get from things trying to get into your body, okay? Where do you find stratified squamous? Any place where you are dealing with abrasion. If it's keratinized, you're gonna find it in the epidermis. The palms and the soles of the feet are especially heavily keratinized. You will also have it in areas that have um, that are exposed to dry air, like your lips, all right? Um, other areas like that. Okay, so what are we dealing with? So let's look at the pictures. Down here, it's hard to tell, but you have your free edge. If there's a free edge, it's epithelium. Down here, I have connective tissue proper specifically a realer, and we'll talk more about that later, okay? Now I can see I have lots of rows, so I know it's stratified. If I'm down here, I can see that my cells are kind of cuboidal or round in shape. They start to flatten out as I get up here. Up here, they're so flat, I can't even see them. So up here, they're squamous. We take the name of the tissue based on the apical cells. So this is stratified squamous. Okay? All right, next slide. This is basically just the same thing, except we're showing you non-keratinized. So again, down at the, so let's see, um, this is your free edge over here. This is your connective tissue proper. So over here, you got your cells that are kind of cuboidal or round in shape. Over here, they start to flatten out and become squamous in shape, okay? So the, it is still stratified squamous. When you've got a lot of keratin, it makes things um, tougher and they resist abrasion even better. They resist the loss of water even better. So we put keratinized stratified squamous on the outside of our bodies. We tend to be non-keratinized on the inside of our bodies where we've got a lot of moisture like inside your mouth or in your vagina. Okay, you still have to do resisting of abrasion, 
but you're not having to deal with quite as rough an environment as the outside of the body. Next slide. All right, here's another example, and this happens to be keratinized. Um, this is the free edge. This is my connective tissue proper. I can see I've got cuboidal roundish cells here, but at the apical layer, they are really flat. So this is stratified squamous epithelium. Next slide. All right, let's look at transitional epithelium. Now, some books, all right, some books will say that this is a variation of stratified squamous. And technically it is. But I want you to not think about that. I want you to just focus on the name. If you get into higher level classes, you can think about the um, technicalities of how these things are named. But for now, I just want you to focus on calling this transitional epithelium, okay? And we're gonna look at the, one, the image on the right. So I have my free edge up here. I have my basal edge down here. So here's the basement membrane. And what I see are roughly cuboidal around shaped cells on the basal edge. Now, this edge, they're really weird. Instead of being cubed, so they're not cube shaped. Let me erase that. They're not cube shaped. They're not squamous and they're not columnar. They are bubbles, okay? So I can see a bubble here, a bubble here, a bubble there, all right? And this is non-distended, which means it's not stretched out, okay? So when you see this type of cell and it's not stretched out, all right, you know you're dealing with transitional epithelium. Now, if I take this bubble shape, all right, versus this square shape, if I try to flatten out my, my square, it's gonna be a little, so let's say it'll be a little bit like this, if I squash it and stretch it, if I stretch it out. But if I take this bubble and I stretch it out, I can make it more like this, because I'm basically squashing it, okay? What that means is this bubble shape can stretch more without tearing than a cube shape can. So we are going to use this epithelium in places where you need to do a lot of stretching, okay? So basically, the two places where you find this, the urinary tract, so like your ureters, and your bladder. So when your bladder is empty, it's about the size of your fist. When your bladder is full, it can basically hold two pints of beer, okay? So we need to go from this to this without ripping the epithelium. So you use this bubble shape so that it can do this and the bag can expand, okay? Next slide. All right, here is an actual slide of the bladder that we use in our on-campus a and labs. And right there is my connective tissue. Here is my free edge. And what I will see are my roughly cuboidally columnar shaped cells. And then over here, I can see I've got big, fat, big cells. Whoops, went over there, one there. All right, so these are bubble shaped. All right, because the apical cells are bubble shaped, we call this transitional epithelium, and we find it in the bladder, ureters, urinary tract. All right, next slide. All right, let's look at stratified cuboidal. So stratified two layers of cells, both the apical and the basal layers are gonna be square to round in shape, okay? So let's look at the drawing first, because that's a little bit easier. And what you will see is I've got this shell, cells, blech, those are my cells, and you can see that the basal cells and the apical cells, they're roughly about the same size. Some of them are squashed and a little bit longer. Some of them are more like this, okay? But it's not a very thick layer, okay? And each row tends to be about the same height. What's interesting is if you look at this one, part of it is simple cuboidal, 
but over here it's gone towards stratified cuboidal. This is a very common occurrence where you've got a structure that's transitioning from one tissue type to another. Okay, so functionality. All right, lots of room, same function that simple cuboidal is going to have. All right, it's going to make stuff, make. So it's making hormones, um, it's making sweat, all right, and then it's going to secrete it. So, so it makes and secretes, okay? Where do you find it? Types of sweat glands, ovarian follicles, seminiferous tubules, that's where you make your sperm, okay? Let's look at the photomicrograph now. So this a photomicrograph, if I haven't mentioned it before, so a micrograph is when you see something through a microscope. A photo is when you've taken a photo of it, okay? So right here is my free edge. Here is my connective tissue. And I can see right here, yeah, it's not a very good drawing, but you can see where I am getting two rows, roughly, of cuboidal cells. Over here, you can see where I've got the single row, okay? All right, next slide. All right, this is one of my favorite slides to use for stratified cuboidal. This is from an ovary. And right here is an egg. And then somewhere over here is another egg. And this is the fluid inside the follicle. So this is um, basically the noob. And this is the mature over here, OK? And I can see simple cuboidal really nicely, OK? Whereas over here, I can see I've got like three to four rows of cuboidal cells. So this is the stratified cuboidal. So I really like this slide because I can contrast simple cuboidal and stratified cuboidal. And what's really cool is if I come up here, I can see simple squamous. Isn't that awesome? All right, next slide. All right, now we are going to look at stratified columnar. What I want you to do is look down at this bottom picture right here. I've got cuboidal cell right here, and then up here, I've got columnar shaped cells. So typically the basal row tends to be cuboidal. These are the cells going through mitosis. And then as the cells get pushed up one or two rows, and they become much better at producing stuff and to secrete it, they become more columnar in shape because there's more room. It's a bigger factory, okay? So, um, again, what is, the, did I not write down the function? I didn't write down the function on here. All right, so again, they make and secrete just like the other columnar cells. So they're making and secreting stuff. What I've got, what I really want for you to focus on is this neat rose of nuclei. They're really lined up neatly. I've got a row here and a row here. If I look at the picture up here, I see again a neat row of nuclei and a neat row of nuclei. It is tidy. Stratified columnar is tidy. Okay? And same thing down here. We're looking at the conjunctive of the eye. I have a neat row of nuclei for the cuboidal cells and a neat row of nuclei for the columnar cells. And then I've squashed in some cute little goblet cells, okay, which are going to help lubricate the surface of your conjunctiva. Next slide. All right, so when students are confronted with stratified columnar and pseudostratified columnar, they can sometimes get confused. One of the nice things is there are very few examples of stratified columnar in the body, and we don't look at it very often. When in doubt, guess PCCE, okay, or PCE. When in doubt, say it's pseudostratified. Now, how do you tell the difference? Tidy, messy, okay? The rows of nuclei are really neatly lined up in stratified columnar, whereas on pseudostratified, I've got the nuclei squashed all over the place, okay? That's basically how you tell the difference if you're trying to tell the difference, all right? This is the last slide in this particular section. I think the next 
video lecture is going to focus on a bunch of different uh, photo micrographs that we uh, of uh, histology slides that we actually use in the on-campus labs and we're going to go through and talk about how to interpret those all right thank you